I'm going to start out with a very general question, uh, which is, you're all journalists, we're all journalists, um, and the journalist's vocation is, at its best at least, to seek out the truth, tell true stories about the world, write those true stories ideally in an entertaining and interesting fashion. Um, and in certain ways, the story of what's happening in Roman Catholicism is a journalist's um, dream in the sense that it is a remarkable human drama. It's a crisis in the world's oldest religious institution. Um, it's a complex story that, le that creates um, situations where journalists can do their work incredibly well. Um, at the same time, you're all Catholics. Not only that, are we all converts on this panel? Guilty. Sort ish, of? Yeah. Ish, ish. Mm -hmm. I was a teenage convert, so I, maybe I'm ish too. Sure. So, ish. But, um, so we all are committed to the institution that we're covering. Not only are we committed to it, we think that it is the means through which God has willed the salvation of the human race. Um, and that makes, I would, I would say, covering the church at this moment complicated. And I wonder if each of you, starting with you, because you're sitting next to me, um, could just say a little bit about sort of the experience of writing about the scandal as a journalist and as a Catholic at the same time and sort of how that plays out in your work. So you're starting with the softball question. The softball. I said, I promise, it would be easy. I think it's, it's profoundly exciting and profoundly challenging. Uh, when I first got into reporting, which was certainly uh, an accident, uh, but I found that's actually how you get your best stories are typically accidents. Uh, you know, I, I remarked to a number of people that I'm sort of sad that I didn't live through 2002 because it must have been such a ride to cover that. And uh, Well, here we are in 2018, and I think most people that covered 2002 would say it's far worse than 2002. Uh, and so it's a constant toll, but, you know, I, I miss going to Mass and not sort of listening to the prayers of the faithful and wondering if there's going to be a prayer for survivors. Uh, I miss sort of thinking about my Cardinal Archbishop as just that, someone who I respect, not someone I cover. Uh, I miss sort of always feeling like I have to sort of observe my faith as well as practice it. Uh, so those are certainly uh, challenges. It's, it's a tightrope. Uh, but to see the institution up close uh, in the midst of it is also a source of, you know, strange hope. Uh, what happened last week in Baltimore, which I'm sure we will discuss at great length uh, soon, uh, was immensely challenging, surprising to a lot of us, uh, but to also sort of see the reactions, you know, the leadership at its best and at its worst and some mix thereof, uh, you know, it is in its own way faith affirming as well to see people that really care about this and getting it right and uh, to you as a journalist to challenge them in that process is also uh, rewarding as well. Uh, so it's all of those things. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's messy, but it's, uh, it's, it's worth the mess. So. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that you know, there are a lot of non-Catholic journalists, you know, religion journalists who are also covering this. And I think, um, you know, the different dimension that uh, arises when you are a Catholic journalist covering it is that for, for survivors or for people who, you know, are whistleblowers or people who um, are in some way traumatized by what's happened directly or peripherally, when they talk to a Catholic journalist, there's a different kind of relationship there. You know, a lot of these people feel like they're trying to tell their stories and get some kind of response, and the institutional church is just kind of frozen. And I think the, the meeting in Baltimore is a good example of that. They just feel like there's no access and there's no response, and that every response they get is about uh, a further response that will be forthcoming, um, if they get anything at all. So when they talk to a Catholic journalist, I think a lot of these people actually get some benefit from it, because at least it's a fellow Catholic who, you know, who's listening. You know, someone inside the church who's going through the same thing you are going through cares um, in a very real and material way. And there's, there's a therapeutic element, especially um, when people disclose stories about sexual exploitation or assault um, to journalists. Um, they're oftentimes telling their stories the first time. That's been my experience with a few victims I've worked with. Um, and and I, I take a lot of solace in that because the other side of it is that you know, when you're an ordinary Catholic who's going to Mass every Sunday and taking your kids there, um, every week you show up with a new story in your head. Um, 
and, you know, just stuff you didn't know before that is indelible now, can't unknow it, and it's not great news. Um, and, and so I think it, uh, it's, it's difficult. Uh, it's difficult um, for the people who are covering it. Um, I, had, I had an experience where I went to the Prince George County Courthouse to pull criminal files on a priest who was convicted in 1986 of the molestation of three minors and given 25 years. And so I had to tell the clerk to pull it off microfiche because they're not just sitting in the courthouse at that point. And so the clerk pulled it off the microfiche, printed the pages, and I had given him names and dates so he could make sure that he was getting the right thing. And he eventually brought me the stack of pages and said, you can read this if you want. I don't want to see any more. And I thought, you know, well, my job's going to be to go home tonight and wait till my two-year-old goes to sleep and then read all of it. Um, and so that's difficult. And I do hope that the victims and the survivors who are working with journalists and you know Catholic journalists, like I said, adds that different dimension. I hope that they're getting... Um, something good out of it, and I, I hope that it's not having, you know, an overall detrimental effect either. So it's very challenging. It's very complicated. Uh, I think for me, for our agency, I think our faith is sort of the animating principle of the work that we do. Um, I uh, believe the church is and is becoming one holy Catholic and apostolic because she, she is those things by divine institution, and yet she's always in need of reform, and in always being in need of reform, she's always in need of purification. And, um, and I, I think for us, um, uh, fr from my perspective, um, our, our baptism makes us responsible, co-responsible for the life and the mission of the church and for the holiness of the church. And, um, and I, it's, it's been an extremely difficult grace to be able to, um, to do that in this way where I think part of the, the job is to, um, um, is to recognize that for, for Catholic journalists right now, there's something of a prophetic dimension because we're um, pointing to things that are true and in pointing to things that are true, I think um, by, by that very fact, calling the church to, to to a deeper conversion, to a deeper kind of commitment to live as as she's according to what she says is true. So that's hard. Um, I've been, um, you know, angry and disappointed and, and frustrated, and not only sort of in the institution, qua institution, but in people that I care about and that I know. I've been hanging around the church for a long time, so people that I, I know and respect and love, who have let me down in various ways, and all of us have that experience. Every, every Catholic has that experience in one way or another right now. Um, but, but, um, but I do think there's a, a sense in which all of us are um, responsible for, um, for the holiness of the church, and, um, and this is the way that we do it, but I think all, you know, all of us have to kind of figure out and discern what, what it is that, that, that we're to do right now um, for the mission of the church and for the kingdom.